it's miserable and magical. Oh yeah. Tonight's the night when we forget about the deadlines. It's time. Uh oh. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. <laughs> Taylor Swift NPC. Why does streams? Thank you for the rose. <laughs> oh, that's so sick. Guys, I kind of look like Taylor Swift. I want to practice singing. Because you don't think Taylor no. Swift's a little I, bit of a kink? I, another controversial opinion. <laughs> TMI, but she's having sex in a scene, and like he records the vocals of that scene. People were like, oh, you know, she's boy crazy. She's a slut. Has anyone thought that her and Travis are PR? Is she like a little bit bi? Uh, they're called Gaylers. <laughs> Everything will be alright if you Even keep me next to you. Oh, you don't great. Know about me. <laughs> and welcome back to Unregistered, your favorite college confessions podcast. I am Zach. I'm Fabi. And do we have a special guest for you today? You probably have never expected that we would get this guest on our show. It is the pop sensation, the viral phenomenon. It is Taylor Swift's lookalike, Sarah. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you, everybody. My name is Serafina Ellen, and I'm so happy to be with all of you guys today. This is Serafina Allen, and one thing she loves to do is sing. And she took her passion and her looks and combined it into impersonating Taylor Swift. Boys only want love. And so now, she's Calgary's very own fake Taylor Swift. So let's figure out why she started all of this. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling excited. I, okay. I like talking to people. I like getting out of my house. Sweet. It's great. Nice. nice. Perfect. Why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, who you are yeah. outside of the persona. So, uh... My name is Serafina, and I am a second year finance student at the University of Calgary. Um, and I just like doing whatever I want, really. I, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. Uh, I was a flautist for eight years, and I was going to originally do a performance degree on the flute. But I was like, I'm going to make no money doing that, and I want to be rich. And so I was like, I'm going to do finance, and let's see what happens. But I love to write music. I like to dress up. I like doing makeup art. I used to be a little bit of a makeup influencer back in my prime at 14. And I would, <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would paint on my eyelids with um, little like water paints. And I just, just kind of say, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. Totally fair. Totally see it. And so I noticed the red lipstick and the eyeliner are very Taylor Swift. Um, so <laughs> tell us like why Taylor Swift? Swift? What made you become a fan? Yeah. Oh, what made me become a fan? That was probably Love Story in like 2009. Heard the, it for the first time. The song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, I heard it on the radio, got stuck in my head one night, mm -hmm. and I was just singing it in my room. And I actually had bangs. The hair, I had it before her. I think Taylor Swift might have copied my haircut. I think she... You heard it here first. I think she might have caught wind of me as, as a kid, and she just saw, saw my haircut and was like, you know, we have a similar enough face shape. If it looks so good on that child, it'll look great on me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I definitely copied her red lipstick. <laughs> Oh, and course, her yeah. entire persona. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, like, what made you want to, like, I guess impersonate Taylor yeah. Swift? Is that the best way to say it? I'd in say, act? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, basically, I'd always wanted to perform at the open mics at U of C um, my first year of university. Okay. But I was too scared. I had no idea what I would even perform if I did. And so I saw the post in September saying, hey, you know, we're doing an open mic. And I'm like, okay, I need to figure out what I'm doing. Scrolling TikTok. And a clip from the Reputation Stadium tour comes up of her doing I Did Something Bad. And I'm like, that choreography is insane. The vocals are insane. I'm going to do that. I got the hair. I got the attitude. I got the the, Delulu, the delusion. <laughs> the Delulu is real. <laughs> and so I just pulled up. And so like with this persona, what came with it? Because I know you that video of yours caught some like crazy steam. <laughs> And you 
like blew the fuck up on TikTok. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, you do from the distance, you do very much <laughs> look like Taylor Swift and and you I guess sound like her. I'm not a big Swifty myself. I don't know about you, Fabby. I'm not a huge Swifty. But I mean, I know her music. <laughs> I actually fucking hate her music, T B H. Not all of it. Like I like one or two songs That's fair. at That's most. Fair. But I don't really like Taylor Swift, if I'm being completely honest with you. My whole question, no offense to anyone or anything, (laughs) is just the fandom. Like, help me understand the Swifty world, because I feel like it's like, Swifties are like Swifties, you know? I'm scared of them a little bit. uh, Me too, 1000%. So I just want to, like, know what the fuck is up. (laughs) I think when you have any kind of large community the loudest voices are going to be the most intense and sometimes the most unreasonable voices because if you have say like millions and millions of fans say if you have ten thousand of them who are acting crazy on the internet it's gonna present the fan base as like these crazy individuals because you have children who don't know how to act on social media, who are all like, Taylor Swift is my idol and she is everything and she is a deity and they take it so seriously. And then you have Disney adults on the same wavelength acting in a similar way. And then when you have more like moderate people in between who just have an appreciation for her as an artist, as a businesswoman, as a a songwriter, as just a fashion icon. Um, (laughs) I don't know about that one. Ah, she's great. Have you seen some of her outfits? Man, they're so fun to make. I can't. They're great. I, I love can't them. argue. They're, They're so amazing. I don't know, man. I guess she's like a fucking pop star, but I'm not a big fan. Uh, you think I'm gonna get fucking like crushed by the Swifties? I'm scared no. a little bit. No, it, it's like I like I said. You have some people who are more intense, but then, like, even on my videos, Swifties will hate on me because they're No like, way. You yeah. receive hate from the Swifties? Oh, 100%. They're like, Taylor Swift would hate this. Taylor Swift's going to sue you. But once again, it's children because they're yeah. just being like, this is illegal. You're going to get arrested. Taylor Swift's going to sue you. Um, and I'm just like, I'm a tribute artist. I don't make money from this. I do this at an open mic. That was actually mic. my next question yeah. is if you make any money from it. Like underneath the table type shit? So um, the money that I do make, like I can't, when I do gigs uh, at concert venues, I don't charge for them. Mm -hmm. I do them because I enjoy doing them and it makes good content for my social media, which Mm -hmm. is the most important thing for me. And it's just fun to get up on stage. Yeah. But I live stream and every dollar that I make live streaming goes directly towards me doing singing lessons because I haven't been able to afford them. And at being a full-time student, I can't just dish out hundreds and hundreds of dollars a year to take singing lessons and so i raise money for it doing live streams no way you live stream i didn't know that how does the live streaming going for you it's been on tiktok on tiktok Uh, i used to stream on twitch in another life okay Um, (laughs) on tiktok and you like impersonate are you like um uh like the npc type ones like thank you for the rose (laughs) it's like something like that (laughs) nothing like that (laughs) taylor swift npc yeah are you ready for it while the streams, no, 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 Whoa. nothing like that. Nothing Can you like that. Again? that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Why the streams? Thank you for the rose. <laughs> oh, that's so sick. Okay. Yeah, no, do nothing like that. It's all just, um, hey guys, I kind of look like Taylor Swift. I want to practice singing because the second I have to sing in front of people, I get nervous and my voice shakes. So request a Taylor Swift song and I'll do it. If you hate how I'm singing, that's completely fine because every mm. gift donated goes directly towards the cause of me getting better at singing. <laughs> what a great mark. That's totally valid. And so, yeah, people just request what songs they want, and I sing them. Okay, wow. That's so insane. what's, like, the end goal here with with this? So I love writing music. I've always done that, never been the best singer, but I want to release my own music one day, and I want to, well, I actually did release my very first song either last week or two weeks ago. It's called Mr. Fast Car. Um, Go check it out. Go check it out on Spotify, Apple Music, (laughs) Serafina Ellen. Um, But I like writing comedy music mostly. Um, I wanted to be female Bo Burnham. Okay. (laughs) And so my music is not like Taylor's exactly. I take a lot of inspiration from her in her um, ideas and what she represents, but it's a little bit different kind of music for sure. Holy that's shit, so that's fun. really fucking cool. Um, and so, like, with this music, do you, do you like stand-up a lot? Or do you just like Bo Burnham? 
Bo Burnham has a special place in my heart because I, I just think he's great. I think there's some stand-up artists who I enjoy, but it's not something I'll always watch per mm -hmm. se. Like that's one thing I want to try. Like I, I've been trying singing, I've been trying dancing. I want to try going to like a comedy club and doing a stand-up routine. I don't want to be a stand-up comedian, but I just want to try it once to see what happens. And like, if I get heckled at a stand-up thing, <laughs> there is nothing that could take me down in life because I feel like there would be nothing worse. Like, if you can get over the worst embarrassments, you can do anything. If That's you can true. get hated on social media, you can go and do a business presentation, no sweat. Like, class presentations are easy. I just pull up and I'm just like, I am confident. I am yeah. I'm amazing. So like that's I guess you're inspiring me as I'm like sitting down here. <laughs> I didn't know that <laughs> prior to it. But like how do you overcome cuz like yeah, like you're right like doing like shit like this on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, or TikTok, um you do get a lot of hate and like yeah. you're right like how how do you deal with and not the hate but like how do you deal to like keep moving forward from people like oh this like this girl's cringe and this and that and like you know how do you deal yeah. with that? I uh, have a good cry sometimes. <laughs> um, but then Respect. I yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just need to cry and then let it go. Um, but the main thing that I do is I, like, part of me wants to respond to every hate comment I get and just come back with something snarky and just being like, uh, you can't hate on me, you're five, you know nothing. Um, but what I do is I let myself have one hate comment a day that I respond to. Oh, wow. And I, I craft it and I'm just like, I channel all that energy into the unlucky person in my comment section. And I'm just like, you, I get to unleash it on you today. <laughs> and no. it's never anything like really mean. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, I looked up at your profile and you have over a hundred thousand followers, but you can't crack 2000 views. Uh, imagine being washed up like that. Couldn't be me. <laughs> Damn, Taylor Swift. Shit. That would hurt. <laughs> Getting roasted from Taylor Swift's mm. lookalike. Yeah, like, that would damn. hurt. Yeah. Honestly. Like, good for you. Do a little <laughs> comeback. I'm yeah. all for hating the haters. So. Fuck them. Agreed. <laughs> Shake Not it off. Not literally. But okay. <laughs> I have a confession. As on this podcast, tradition is you have to react to a confession. I confess. I don't really listen to Taylor Swift, but my girlfriend is a Swifty and has convinced and has me convinced Taylor's into BDSM. There are a bunch of songs that have some hints, with an obvious one being I Don't Want to Live Forever from Fifty Shades Darker. There's also Wildest Dreams, where she says, I want your name engraved in my bed, which totally gives me kink vibes. I watched the documentary on Netflix, and her house gave me those vibes, and I wouldn't be surprised if her bed gave subtle hints. Also, daddy issues. Enough said. Got that from a Reddit forum for... Swifty fans. So, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the first one that stood out to me, the daddy issues. Taylor Swift, there's no daddy issues. Scott Swift, I don't know if you know anything about her dad. I don't know the lineage. Is like the nicest man, apparently, who's mm -hmm. ever like done anything. He, he, what he does is at the concerts, he hands out guitar picks with her face on them and he goes up to fans and he's just like, he talks to them and then he actually goes and he talks to them about like finance and investing and he, he's just like, oh, here's the like, good stocks you should invest in and he's, he's just- He's a finance bro? He's a finance bro. So her mom <laughs> so was in marketing. a finance bro? Yeah. <laughs> and he spent like um, hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest in her very first, um, like record label that signed her because uh -huh. it was a startup and so he owned like 33 percent of it and he started you know just investing in her and comes across as the sweetest person ever i think he beat up a paparazzi recently who got too oh close my God, to them i saw yeah. that i did see that on tiktok mm -hmm. yeah you know and so he stands up for his daughter that's respect what matters the financial advice <laughs> i mean those girls are spending thousands of dollars <laughs> to be at the that concert. concert yeah so i don't think that they're the smartest people when it comes to money just saying well see the thing is it's an investment going to a taylor swift concert is an investment because it's a memory that you're going to have forever and what are you going to miss more the memories that you never got to have or the 700 dollars tickets that you got that night so where I does mean, uh bdsm equipment i, I don't I, I, I honestly don't think that that's anything you don't think taylor no. swift's a little I, bit of a kink I've i think never for sure. have you seen her she <laughs> in terms of like just a pop star in general in like you know in hollywood i don't want to get conspiracy theorists on you but 
She might have some kinks on her. I could totally see this. We all have some kinks on us. <laughs> but I don't think that I don't think she's ever given off that vibe more than any other pop the star. songs the songs what any any pop star can say anything in any song and just like what i think like, have you ever seen the show the idol uh i've seen clips of it it's like the weekend really show yeah, the yeah. weekends in it oh. and he is like with this pop star idol and she has some crazy kinks where like she is uh getting fucked in a scene or i guess like Sorry, <laughs> TMI, but she's having sex in a scene and like he records the vocals of that scene and like the vocals are in the song. And I know Taylor Swift doesn't do that, but like behind closed doors, she's with Travis Kelsey. You don't think she just she likes like somewhat dirty sex, you know? I mean, I totally think she does. So I'm not even yeah. going to argue with Everybody this. Everybody likes and a then, little bit of dirty sex, right? <laughs> Who doesn't? And then also her <laughs> songs, like she's always so honest in the lyrics and stuff that like if that's exactly. what you're getting, if that's what you're picking up, maybe that's what she's putting down. What do you think, Sarah? She puts a whole story <laughs> and array. I'm not, this is not to convince you that she's kinky, but I want but you to. But that there's like a, a side. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, I haven't, like there's one song that I know in the fandom is considered like the song like hot Stevie oh my God. yeah <laughs> it's called it's called false god and you know I, i'll get canceled by the swifties for saying i skipped lover when it came out um because i wasn't i wasn't really part I'm, of the fandom one I'm of her no most idea uh, you what know that means. most iconic one of the most iconic albums um okay and there's a song on it called false god where it's she's like oh yeah i don't even know the words but she's it's the it's the hot and heavy one yeah and so i guess maybe i just don't have the most context because i skipped the the horny face of Taylor Swift. <laughs> fair, fair. But you know, I'm a speak now fearless debut girl through and through. And so I, I can't, I can't speculate, you know, it's not fair to her, not fair to my girl Tay Tay um, to just to make, uh, to make any statements without all the facts. So you're fair. saying she's a wholesome missionary type esque person. No, I can no. see that. <laughs> no. Gomez. You I'm didn't like Gomez. that one. <laughs> okay. That's fair. That's valid. Um, <laughs> another controversial opinion question. <laughs> Has anyone thought that her and Travis are PR? What's PR? Oh, like public relations? Like yeah. Fake, yeah. Oh, like fake? Fake, yeah. Fake. Like like for press. Like yeah. they're, they're fake press? dating. I don't know. No. I, there's no reason so for her. You think it's fake? I think that there are aspects that could le- lead me to believe do tell, that it's do fake. Tell. I don't know. I just, I was on like Super Bowl and she was Taylor and her Travis um, TikTok. And there were some videos where... I was like, hmm, that's a little sketchy, you know? Why would Of, like, the, the behind the scenes. Because they, like, weren't hanging out when they, like, were separate when the love story was on. But then, like, the manager whispered to them, and then they started, like, singing together. So I'm like, that's a little bit sus. But that's just I don't know, man. me. And also, I thought it was press right when it started later i was like well they seem really into each other but right when they started it was like joe jonas and sophie turner's divorce and so the press totally they were on those two for less than a week and then moved on to taylor and so maybe it was like to help out her friend sophie see like at the beginning that would make sense but there's no reason that they would prolong it this long That's true. For, for PR. And Taylor Swift has no reason to get that kind of PR. Like, she couldn't That's be true. bought for that much because she already has more money in the world. She has more fame than anybody else. She That's is true. modern day Michael Jackson. As exactly. Said. 100%. Yeah. Modern day Michael Jackson's insane. Oh my God, I have a question. Yeah. Who is your favorite ex boyfriend? Ex boyfriend? Ex boyfriend. Okay. John Mayer. See, John, the the thing is, <laughs> if we like didn't have thing? if we didn't have John Mayer as an ex-boyfriend, we wouldn't have had the two best Taylor Swift songs of all time, Dear John, and uh, Would Have, Could Have, Should Have, which are my favorite. Okay. And so, technically, John Mayer inspired the best songs. But That's what I say about Drake. Rihanna inspired the best songs out of him. But then, my favorite... Jordan. The wolf from Twilight. Taylor Lautner. Oh, Taylor Lautner. Lautner. She yeah, did Taylor Lautner. Yeah, yeah, she did way back when. And his song i know this one um something Back december, december yeah. that one mm-hmm. do you think uh she has a type for only white guys would i have a shot with taylor swift no why is that because you're not <laughs> taller than she height? is <laughs> yeah i don't know if i agree with Oops. that yeah but like 
Well, think? Taylor Lautner was short. Short, yeah. And so is exactly Joe Jonas. So. Also, Taylor Lautner isn't white. Taylor Lautner is basically white. No. He's not. He's not? No. What he is, is he? I got you. You're saying I would not have a chance with Taylor Swift? I'm no. saying there's a chance. Not non-zero. There's a chance? Non-zero. That I yeah. end up with Taylor Swift? I mean, not I that you end up with Taylor Swift, but I don't that know she if she's my you. type. Me, she's not your type. She's not my type at all. <laughs> oh. Let me tell you, Taylor Swift. I <laughs> politely declined this offer. Did but... you get where he's from? Uh, well, he's from America, uh, but his ancestry is Dutch, French, and German. Which oh, is very, very white. Mm-hmm. He's white. So, what? but then <laughs> why does? So Taylor Lautner he is looks also like white. Half Filipino or something. So Taylor Lautner is also white. Interesting. So is her type just white guys? Yeah. Do you think Fabiana's her type? Is she like a little bit bi? I don't think so. There are theories about it. Uh, really? They're called Gaylers. Um, <laughs> um, in, okay. So in the 1989 era, uh, Taylor Swift started stopped like hanging out around like men because people were like, oh, you know, she's boy crazy. She's a slut. All of Is this that stuff. Bad oh blood God. era. Bad blood era. Yes. yes. And so she started hanging out with her girlfriends more. And um, then the press was like, oh, she's gay. Mm. Damn. And so there's a lot of rumors about that and if you talk to to a gayler they'll tell you about how uh, the song lavender haze is actually um a queer term apparently mm. which i didn't know about and so you know see i don't get a little gay vibes from taylor swift i do get it a little from selena gomez sometimes mm. you know I like I Selena know. Gomez. I'm a big Selenator, if that's what you say. Selenator? Selenator. Selenator. I yeah. love Selena Gomez. Like I would, that likes. sounds like something I would use to like filter my water. A Selenator. <laughs> yeah, cool. like a <laughs> that's a pretty good one. <laughs> um, okay, let's wrap up this episode with our favorite segment. is rapid fire question. Taylor Swift edition. Okay. So I have curated a bunch of, from different articles, a bunch of different questions to see mm-hmm. if you're a true swifty <laughs> what was taylor swift's second album fearless from which album is the song mine speak now what is taylor swift's middle name allison where is taylor swift's hometown oh city and state it's pennsylvania reading pennsylvania that was good. <laughs> what is your favorite number? Oh, 13. That was easy. easy. I knew that yeah. one. I, when I saw this question, I was like, this is a stupid question. Everyone knows that. Who has a favorite number? I guess. She does. How many siblings does Taylor Swift have? She has one brother. And bonus points if you know his name. Oh, what's his name? Okay. Yeah. And that concludes the episode. Could you? <laughs> do you have any last messages for people watching this? Stream Mr. Fast Car if you hate Albertan drivers or if you have to sit near any man who smells bad in class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm excited. Okay. Already. And thank you so much for coming Thanks. on. Yeah, thank so you so much, much for having and me. Thank you all for listening, watching, um, subscribing. Please follow, comment, whatever, interact, share with your friends. Have a good time. Comment if you think you're a Swifty and what song of Taylor Swift you like. True story. Okay. Okay. Should we say bye? All together? Yeah. Three, All right. two, one. Bye. bye.